Hi, I'm Corey Rich, adventure photographer and filmmaker, and we're in beautiful Patagonia, Argentina. Today I'm going to talk to you about shooting time lapses. Time lapses allow you to take a long duration of time and accelerate or compress that into a short duration of time. For example, four hours into four seconds. Really there are three ways to shoot time lapse. The most obvious is you record a video clip and then accelerate it in post-production. The two techniques that we're going to focus on today is time-lapse photography mode and interval timer shooting. When I was on top of the building in Buenos Aires, Argentina, looking over the city as the sun was setting in the background, I opted to use time-lapse photography mode. Now the beauty of time-lapse photography mode is that it allows you to set your interval, yet when you're finished shooting the, the time-lapse, it generates a movie in camera. So you get a quick time movie straight out of the camera. So you get instant feedback. Did it work or did it not work? If you want to post it on social media or drop it into your video edit, it's ready to go. When you finished your shoot, you can actually review your final video on the back of your camera. And that's pretty incredible. It's instant feedback. Now the more advanced option is to use interval timer shooting or the built-in intervalometer in your Nikon D7200. When you're using interval timer shooting, the beauty of this function is that in the aftermath of capture, you still have access to the RAW files or the JPEGs that were captured during the time lapse. Now this allows you more opportunity to later go in and manipulate the individual images or the sequence when building your final time lapse. One of the great advantages to shooting in interval timer mode is that you actually have the ability to crop your time lapse in the aftermath. You're essentially shooting a 6K movie file. So later we can go in and actually push in or crop the image. One of the most exciting features of the new Nikon D7200 is the time lapse photography mode and the exposure smoothing capability. It's allowing guys like me and you to go out and shoot extreme changes in light. For example, to watch the city transition from day to night and have no flicker in your final time-lapse video file. If you're shooting time-lapses over an extended period of time with radical changes in light, there's a few things you need to do straight away. One, turn on exposure smoothing. Two, go into an automated exposure mode, aperture priority. And three, turn on auto ISO. Now there's a few other settings that you need to adjust on your camera in order to allow the exposure smoothing to work effectively. Get out of auto white balance and set your white balance appropriate to the environment where you're shooting. In Buenos Aires I was shooting in direct sunlight and in Patagonia again we're in mother nature and so again I'm set at direct sunlight. Go into your menu to set picture controls and make sure that none of the parameters are set to automatic. Next, turn off active delighting and vignette control. The same settings are necessary in order to avoid flicker when shooting in interval timer mode. After time-lapsing the cityscape in Buenos Aires, I wanted more. I mean, the idea is to always push the creative limit. Went downstairs to flag a taxi cab to take me to the hotel and thought, wouldn't it be cool to mount the camera on the taxi cab as the lights blurred by? With just a simple suction cup and a cam strap, I was able to mount the D7200 to the taxi cab and really create the feeling of motion as we whizzed through the city. The point here is use your creativity, use your imagination, and find new places to mount your camera and time lapse.